FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's 10, 10, 19. Well, you've been following the circus in Washington. You know that uh, truth is the first casualty of government and truth isn't even a factor when it comes to progressives because progressivism, collectivism, it's all about the big lie. They tell enough big lies and you will ignore the little lies, little lies, Well, you know what they're about, and we'll find out more about them from Karen Cataline uh, shortly. Hey, questions, comments, uh, what do you think about the media wars taking place? Email us, kl at kerrylutz.com. So, Karen, uh, of course, as always, welcome back. So, we've got this guy, Adam Shifty. I won't use the term that uh, President Trump once uh, referred to him as, but, you know, he's basically full of shift, and, um, (laughs) you know... If you get to choose your enemies, like Trump is so adept at doing, you would just want a guy like Adam Shifty, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, but there's a whole long line of them. First of all, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me back. It's always Mm. great to talk to you, Terry. You know, it's funny, as talk show hosts, you and I, we we look, Mm. uh, we, we feel the obligation to stay on top of the news and read everything that we can and listen to the news and there yeah. comes a point in which it becomes so repetitious and so obvious and so ridiculous. You, all you can really do, and I've been doing, is writing about how anybody could believe these people, no matter what they say. Mm-hmm. What bugs me more than anything is that no matter how many times the media and these leftists uh, are revealed and exposed for the liars that they are, and yet people still, every time there's a new breaking news story, Everybody takes it seriously, even a bunch of conservatives. Sometimes they'll they'll be led around by the nose to to talk about it. And I I don't have a problem talking about it. But in any other part of your life, I know I've said this before, you you uh, judge the credibility of people. And when they lie to you and lie to you and lie to you and they're caught trying to reverse an election from 2016 and they even told you that's what they were going to do. Yeah. then why listen to them? Why keep listening to them and thinking that suddenly, out of nowhere, they're going to start telling the truth? Mm-hmm. Sheesh. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Well, okay, so, interview's over. No, so I'm what's kidding. the truth? <laughs> so what's the truth? I mean, what did Trump do here? Now they're saying Giuliani represented an Iranian gold trader and Trump told uh, Rex Tillerson to back off on the investigation of this guy. <laughs> I mean, they're just grasping at straws, aren't they? They're desperate. They're desperate, desperate. And there's a couple things I think are going on, and I wouldn't be the first person to say it, but it's, you know, pretty reputable conservatives were saying it. The media will never, ever, ever say anything that is uh, negative to their side. They're really just propagandists. And the two things I think are going on, and, and they're both egregious, is one, uh, this is a faux impeachment investigation. They're not doing anything that indicates that they're serious about either impeachment or about anything that you're supposed to do. Mm. They're counting on, they're banking on the ignorance of the American public, which they've had a lot to do with dumbing down. And (laughs) they are hoping that if we talk a bunch about impeachment, It'll lower Trump's numbers. And by the way, I don't I don't buy any of those numbers that I'm hearing at all. You know, again, it comes from the same place. Garbage in, garbage out. So <clears throat> they just hope that they can bloody Trump with the talk of impeachment without really impeaching anybody. And Trump just keeps calling their bluff every time. Well, come on, let's do it. Yeah. You know, you you take a vote and I'm right there. I mean, this is the biggest lie ever. There's just a lot of people that don't uh, that don't know enough or watch enough to see the patterns of what these people do. Uh, and what was my other one? I said there are two things going on. Mm-hmm. One is they're lying about impeachment. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the other huge one is this massive investigation that's going on 
that stands to really bring down the true perpetrators, the people that have been accusing uh, their opponents of doing exactly mm-hmm. what they do. So the uh, Bill Barr investigation and uh, what's his name? Uh, Durham. You know names. Yep. Durham. Yeah, Durham. Durham and Barr, they're on to something. They're actually investigating why this country was put through the ringer for three years for a phony investigation with no grounds and no evidence and nothing. I mean, and, and the, the most interesting thing is that they're all getting exposed as the liars. They are the great Robert Mueller turned out to be a paper tiger. Now we find out he lied. He lied that he was seeking a position as head of the FBI I mean, he lied, and here's all oh, the very famous Mueller, 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 and he's nothing. He's a nobody. He's he's a uh, you know a shadow of his former self, whatever that was. It was never there. And you, you see enough of it. Yeah, you see enough of that stuff, and you go, why? Why is anybody believing any of this? Mm-hmm. Certainly not you and I, Carrie. No, we're past believing <laughs> yeah. anything politicians have to say, especially. Uh, Especially the left. Right? Yeah. And some Republicans, too. I mean, yeah. you know, there's a reason it's called the deep state. Anybody who doesn't think there's a real deep state, they're just not paying attention. Yeah. Uh, the deep state is made up of the globalists who hate Trump, not because of his style and not because of any of that. They hate Trump because Trump stands as an opposition to their globalist agenda that they can't afford to tell anybody about. Because they never asked us if we wanted to be globalists. They never asked us if they wanted to get rid of our borders. Mm. They never asked us if they wanted a completely open immigration and a socialist agenda that brings down America to the rest of the world's level so that Mm. uh, a handful of people can be in charge of everything. I mean, there was a time in which that sounded like crazy black helicopter uh, tinfoil hat stuff. And now we're finding out no, that was true. <laughs> yeah, I've got a tinfoil hat in my uh, closet right now that's collecting dust, dust, but I think I'm going to put it <laughs> back on shortly. <clears throat> yeah, you don't need a tinfoil hat. This stuff is happening in plain view. Yes. This is happening as we watch it. Certainly uh, seems to be. For anybody who wants to watch it. Certainly appears to be, doesn't it? So yeah. what about this Adam yeah. Shifty? You know, he like lies he uh, lies like other people breathe, right? Yeah, he's been caught in lie after lie after lie. I mean, every time he points the finger, we find out he's doing exactly, 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 exactly mm-hmm. what he has <clears throat> accused yeah. others of doing. That's a, you know, that's a, a, a Solowinsky tactic, as if you want to divert attention from all the mm-hmm. dirty tricks you're playing, just accuse others of it. You know, so that if it does come out, I mean, this is the idea. Keep yeah. doing illegal, lawless things. And if it ever comes out that you did it, well, the other side that's pointing the finger will look like they're the ones projecting. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yes. So it's it's kind of a childish thing, which sometimes works. You know, if if it had turned out. Or if it had come out in the mainstream media, which never would, that it was Hillary and the DNC that were actually colluding with Russians, that it was Biden who really was colluding with Ukraine and all of this. And I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. Well, then the people that accuse them of that will have already been accused of it themselves. So then it's just confusing for the public. And they say, ah, Washington, it's all a mess. You know, it's like misinformation that gets put out into the public so that the public who doesn't have time to do this kind of research will say, see, you know, they're all just a bunch of crooks and I don't care who I vote for because it doesn't matter. And that's what they would like. You know, they would like us all just hopped up on marijuana and heroin. Mm. I'm being only slightly facetious. They're bringing back, uh, uh, you know, uh, safe injection sites. Don't get me started. So, you know, as long as people are drugged up and tuned out, that's okay. But if you're aware and you say, wait a second, excuse me, but there's this guy named Mifsud. What about him? And you don't want to hear about that. What about Mifsud? What about Mr. Mifsud? Hmm? 
Well, what about him? So, so yeah, where is all this good. heading? I, you know, where are we heading here? Well, um, you know, <laughs> I got to tell you, I know people who are absolute in walking encyclopedias on this stuff. They report on it and have been reporting on it for three years or more. Myths, mm-hmm. crowd strike, you know, yeah, uh, know. fusion D- GPS, all those kinds of things. And while I know the the basic story, yeah, I'm waiting like everybody else to see what they actually uncover in the way of evidence. Um, what my understanding is, though, that once you start investigating the investigators and you find out that it was a giant hoax, just like we saw on display with the Kavanaugh hearing, you know, where it's circular logic, you mm-hmm. put somebody up to accusing somebody. And the third and the fourth and the twelfth person just validates a total lie. I mean, this is this is disturbing stuff because they're playing the media as dupes. Well, no, the media is playing the public as dupes. That if they just keep reporting this, and they get fed this stuff, that people will buy it. But now we're kind of getting a glimpse behind the curtain and watching how they do these things. I don't know. And this is kind of a glimmer of positive amidst a lot of negative. Let me ask you, um, uh, Carrie, have you ever known a time when you've been politically aware where you've gotten to see the backstage of what these people actually do and how they plant stories and and, uh, leak evidence and then you find out that that's used to perpetuate the story over and over and over again. I'm not saying it's never been done, but mm. we never got to see it so wide, wide in the open, you know? Mm. Yeah. Well, this is what you call what the you wrap think? up. This is called the wrap up smear. And you know, yeah, uh, I've heard that. Yeah. The wrap up uh, smear. Uh, Nancy Pelosi <laughs> was bragging about it. And she says, what it is, is they've got uh, mm. an adversary and they'll plant a story in the media, in the mainstream, and then that story will propagate and get picked up by other publications. And then, you know what'll happen? Uh, The politicians will start quoting it as fact. Well, you know, Trump uh, kicked a dog, you know, in 1986. Isn't he evil? And the New York Times, I'm quoting the New York Times, saying that Trump kicked a cute little fuzzy puppy. And then that becomes accepted truth. And that's called the wrap up smear. So I believe like the whole Ukraine thing, Hey, I don't know for sure about Trump, but uh, I think he's a lot more intelligent than many think. And I think it was all a setup from the get go to smoke out the canary. It was a canary trap using a wrap up smear with a Trojan horse, which the Trojan horse is, Hey, now that you've exposed Ukrainian influence, look at Joe Biden. And today, They just said, uh, according to uh, one publication, that Biden got $900,000 from charisma for lobbying efforts. And these efforts took place when he was still vice president. I think it sounds like a bribe to me. And Rudy Giuliani has been saying that uh, basically Biden is a crook and has been for 30 years. And soon we're uh, we're going to know the truth. Yeah, he's been, he been them, selling yeah. his office. I mean, when you, for when you, years. he was exposed as a plagiarist when he was a young politician and he was a laughing stock then. Mm-hmm. And people do not change their spots. So he can plagiarize other people's political ideology yeah. and sound like today he sounds more moderate. When he was with Obama, he's more radical. He can be anything you want him to be because, after all, Harry, he's a plagiarist. Yeah. Plagiarists are dishonest, and that's what he is. He's, you think? He is. Yeah. Uh, pick your adjective, you know? Yeah, pick he's a adjective. fraud. He's a you fraud. Know? He's always been a fraud. He's always been a buffoon and yep. a dummy. The guy is stupid. There's no question about it. And he's mentally impaired. He's had a couple of aneurysms, had brain surgery. I mean, look, there are a lot of politicians out there who need brain surgery and haven't had it yet. But. You know, when you look at uh, Joe Biden, you you don't want to, how can you elect a guy who has a screw loose? But 
It doesn't seem to mean is, anything is to a, the left. Is that the um? Is that the hair plug? Plugs. Yeah. <laughs> is plug. that why? Well, that was uh, had, uh, Bill Clinton's nickname. Bill Clinton's nickname for Joe Biden was Plugs Biden, and <laughs> you know, well, so. I, well, and notice, notice, and this is the other thing: when you've got a dishonest, one dishonest politician, which I'm being nice, the previous president, they have to get somebody who you can buy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you should yeah. buy, buy, buy Biden. You know. Yeah. You have to get a, a, a dishonest politician is not going to be interested in a politician as his vice president, mm-hmm. as his cohort, right? Yeah. He has to have somebody who will clean up and make a lot of money on the side as Biden. And how about that? Hillary Clinton. She Hillary who? still can't give it up. Mm. I tell you, you know, I think uh, you know, Trump should run against about a half a dozen uh, of them. Catalina, and he'll, I he'll heard them all. I heard a rumor that Hillary actually won the last election, but got gypped. Yeah. Is there any truth to right. that? FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Trilogy Metals is a world-class developer in Alaska's Ambler Mining District. The company already possesses 8 billion pounds of copper, 3 billion pounds of zinc, over 1 million gold equivalent ounces, and now over 77 million pounds of cobalt. Trilogy's Arctic project boasts an after-tax net present value of $1.4 billion with a 33% IRR. Trilogy is led by an experienced management team with proven success in discovering and developing projects in Alaska. The company is well capitalized, has no debt, and possesses strong institutional support. Trilogy trades on the New York and Toronto exchanges under the ticker symbol TMQ. To learn more, go to TrilogyMetals.com. That's TrilogyMetals.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. No, it's only in her own mind. Uh I loved it yesterday. I just loved it. I did it. I put it on my Facebook page. Don't tempt me, she says. Don't tempt me. Hillary Clinton does not need to be tempted to want to be president or to want to run. Her problem is she's utterly delusional and she doesn't understand how much she is despised even by the Democrats. And so her fantasy is, is that people are going to beg her, beg her, beg her to run and nobody's begging her. So she has to create this illusion herself that people are going to beg her to run. I mean, I think I think uh, uh, Donald Trump is licking his chops in running, running against either Biden or Hillary or Elizabeth Warden, Warren, Warden, for that matter. And all the rest of them, they all have blatant lies in their history. Is it any wonder? I mean, I'm not saying Republicans are saints, but, you know, to be a Democrat, you basically. I'm sorry. It's just amazing. This bunch of clowns in the clown show, not one of them doesn't have a major skeleton, not even in the closet out there where everybody can see it. And and it just gets ignored you mean by Focahontas? the uh, press. Focahontas? You're you talking know? about our good friend Focahontas? <laughs> yes. <laughs> she's a total phony. <laughs> she's out there for the little guy, but she's a complete... And total fraud here. Let's face the facts. I mean, there's no question yeah. about it. She's a fraud. The, the first difference, and foremost. Terry, I think, is that when they incite hatred mm. towards Donald Trump, I mean, let's face it, there are people who who detest Donald Trump yeah. every bit as much and probably a whole, whole, whole lot more than all the people we're talking about, Hillary, Biden, all of them. The difference is we Mm. We point to evidence, you know, we point mm. to facts, we point to actual stories that have not been, uh, uh, that ha- nobody has said didn't happen. We've got video evidence of it. What do mm. they have the video evidence of Donald Trump? Mm-hmm. What they have is they have to mischaracterize what he said and what he intended. All we have to do is play the tape of what the Democrats oh, said. Here, I have a better way. Uh, if you're ever thinking about Trump and you just need to understand their thinking, it's, it really comes down to this. And Karen, it really comes down to this orange man, bad. If you just remember that you totally understand the left. 
Because if <laughs> if somebody's talking to me about what a bad person Trump is, I just say orange man bad. You know, orange man bad. It's the ultimate oh. mock of their lack of any understanding or reasoning. But it's like, yeah, I say, you know, that orange man bad. That orange man very bad. And in fact, there's a well, song. It's, it's, there's a song I would like yeah. to play a couple of bars of. We don't have the rights to it. And I don't want John Ward uh, to sue us. But um, um, no, let's just find this Orange Man Bad song and I will play a little bit of it. And hopefully it will work. Um, <laughs> it's funny as hell. But uh, I don't know if you're going to appreciate it the way I do. Uh, I hope I can hear it. Oh, it's a hysterical. <laughs> Hold on. Here it is. Listen. Uh, it gets good, I promise. You'll have to send it to me so I can fully appreciate it. All right. So, yeah, that's it. As long as you understand, this is nothing else. It's just orange man bad, and that's it. So that's the only argument. Harry, I got to tell you, I I got to tell you a quick story if I have time. Sure. So I knew this woman. Uh, I knew she was liberal. We never talked about politics. I ran into her in a grocery store, and uh, so we talked for a little bit. I asked her how she's doing. Said she's moving to China because she can't stand America anymore. Uh-huh. And uh, it's Donald mm. Trump. Of course, she assumed that I agreed with her. And mm. I said, well, what don't you like about Donald Trump? And she said, you don't have enough time. I said, try me. Tell me. What, what don't you like? I want to learn. I want so to she, understand. <laughs> right. <laughs> so she, she kind of looks up with this exasperated look on her face and says, well, he's any, he, she uses the real word, Essie, you know, she's, he's crappy to women. She mm. said, but the Chinese are so and good I to looked women. At her, <laughs> I looked at her and I said, you mean like Bill Clinton? <laughs> like Ted Kennedy? Yeah, exactly. Hey, oh, Ted that was, crappy? <laughs> Ted was a real charmer. He, he just and, killed them. He just killed them. Right, right, right. You know, Donald Trump just talked about grabbing them. We don't have evidence that he actually did. He only talked about it. Bill Clinton mm. raped a woman. The left completely ignored it. Ted Kennedy killed a woman. The left completely ignored it, and the line, the you know, the 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 parade of hits keeps going on and on. We all know. But when I said that, she was so angry she walked she away. Out, huh? Have a nice day, she said. <laughs> yeah, and I thought just, this is <laughs> just like why Juanita Broderick. Liberals today, like Juanita Broderick. She had a great day. Oh yeah, with Bill Clinton. Yeah, Juanita Broderick, I had the pleasure of interviewing her on uh, one of the shows that I did. And I was, it was like a momentous day for me because that story is what turned me into a political activist. Really? See, I thought just having a rapist in the White House was the worst thing that could ever happen. Boy, was I wrong. It just keeps getting worse from there. Yeah, I, I, uh, it was during the Lewinsky thing that I suddenly have had an awakening and said, this can't stand. We can't have a rapist because I saw that NBC program that they tried to spike. Mm -hmm. And this was real. This was a, I, you know, you know, I'm a social worker and I'm, you know, you've dealt with people who've gone through trauma, plenty of people. I believed her. I looked at her and I looked at her interview and I said, Oh my God, I believe she's telling the truth. Yeah. And, uh, and from that point forward, you know, all bets were off. I found myself running rallies at Civic Center Park in Denver. And, and, uh, so I have to thank Bill Clinton for making me a political activist, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, compared to some of these guys today, Bill Clinton looks a little bit like a piker, you know? Yeah. Well, you understand that thing to say, you understand why he got along so well with Harvey Weinstein, they were birds of a feather, weren't they? Well, absolutely. And he got along very nicely with, uh, 
uh, Epstein too. Yeah. Hey, Epstein and they were... they were all protecting each other's secrets. They were all protecting each other's lies and deceit. And, uh, and none of that stuff was ever meant to see the light of day. Mm-hmm. It is only because of Donald Trump and the fact that he can't be bought that any of this stuff is coming to light now of course. and why the left is, is, is their heads are exploding every day. Exploding heads. That's the reason they're <laughs> inciting hatred for Trump. They don't hate Trump. They just want to off Trump out of the political sphere. I mean, I, I know they want to destroy him. They hate him because, because mm-hmm. he stands to and promise to expose them. Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason right there. Yeah. Hey, one thing I wanted to talk to you about Bernie, like Bernie's old. All right. There's no other way to say it. He's an old 76. (laughs) He's a very old 76. I hope I'm a young 72 when I get to that age, like Trump, but uh, Bernie is a young 72. Yeah, definitely. So Bernie has a myocardial infarction, otherwise known I mean, the second I heard about this, that uh, that he was attack. getting stent, I said, oh, you mean he's had a heart attack? And then sure enough, it right. comes out myocardial infarction, which is a medical right. ease way of saying heart attack. And the guy hasn't dropped out yet. So what do they have to pay him this time to get out of the way? Last time it was another lake house, his third house. Uh, what What is the <laughs> price of Bernie's compliance yeah. this time? And he also took a beating at the uh, Democratic National Convention. If you've seen these pictures of him, he literally had like a black eye and he had bruises on his face. And uh, I guess he fell down a flight of stairs, right? Hmm. Yeah, I <laughs> guess so. Like, who was it uh, recently who who got hurt, too? I guess that was uh, Harry Reid a while back. Yeah. Harry um, Reid. He walked you know, into a fist. Nobody knows what really <laughs> happened to him, either. He walked into I a think. fist. We know that already. Yeah, he walked, he walked into, into a, a he walked into a baseball bat. Man, that guy really uh, got the stuff kicked out of him. Yeah, like, it, the the scary part too is that these, unfortunately, our system seems to elevate. It's kind of like a reverse Murphy, uh, Peter principle. Yeah. Elevate the most dishonest people to become politicians because the other ones wash their hands of it and say, "I've had it. This is." This is going to kill me if I keep doing this. Any and normal those guys, person, they, they live off of it. Any normal person, Karen, would say, "Yeah, why do I want to do this?" I mean, I had one exposure to the political system, and the happiest I was was when I lost the primary and didn't have to put up with it anymore because <laughs> I I called them out for what they were, and man, I was like yeah. vilified by half the people. Probably, you know, loved by about a third of them, and the other 15, 20% didn't know anything anyway. So, um, yeah. you know. You're known by your enemies. You should yeah. wear it as a badge of courage. Yep. You're now, right. I, don't, I don't mean to suggest that everybody in public life or in politics are a bunch of thieves and liars. Yeah, I think uh, there, are the, <laughs> there are the rare exceptions. Um, but that truly is one of the many reasons, many reasons why Donald Trump was such a threat from the very beginning. Number one, he had the guts to come out and uh, run on a platform that Americans actually wanted, that the deep state was trying desperately to convince Americans that they didn't want. You notice that all the things that they have been trying to impose on on Americans are not things we voted for not things they ran on. They never ran on that. They never ran on, you know what? We're going to open our borders now. That's you know what? Idea. We don't really care. I interviewed yesterday, was it yesterday, two days ago, a, an angel dad who's running for Congress in Arizona. He lost his son because some illegal alien shot his son in the face at point blank range. Mm-hmm. These politicians don't care about that. Oh, totally they don't not. care. They're just seen as collateral damage, mm-hmm. you know, and it's hard for us to get our brains around that because we grew up thinking that these people were there to represent us. Well, a lot of them are not. And you talk about it every day, but it's just hard to admit, I think, mm-hmm. for a lot of people that that's what we're looking at. Oh, I totally agree. And, you know, look, most people in the country here, Karen, are just trying not to go bankrupt. 
<laughs> trying to feed their families and make their mortgage payments, car payments. They're not thinking about uh, politics. It's something to to uh, succeed in spite of, not because of. So that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but for those of us who see what's happening, um, we we feel. I don't want to speak for you, but I'll speak for myself. But I have a responsibility to to be a little bit like Paulette Revere. Um, there are a lot of times when we preach to the choir, but then there are times when we are able to alert people to what's going on um, because the people who are advocating our demise never get held accountable for the destruction. Ooh, that's a good line. I'm going to have to write yes. that down. Yeah, well, the, here, the, <laughs> people, the people who are out, out there, they're trying to so supposedly solve the very problems that they created, right? They created, right. Uh, that's right. their scam. And that's why right. this thing is so, so bad because, uh, you know, it, it's, it's totally dishonest. And the cure, the uh, progressive cure is always worse than the disease that they're purportedly trying to cure. Yeah. And that's what the whole problem yeah. really is. Uh, because the yeah. average Joe, like yeah. I said, is just trying not to go bankrupt to trying to save enough for his kid's college or college. You know, it's, this goes both ways here. It's not a, it's not uh, a, a, a gender issue by any stretch because there's plenty of single uh, mothers out there who feel the same way. And then, and then, um, the, the Democrats progressives will take advantage of those people by saying, you know, we're going to, uh, fix this problem without ever saying we're the ones that created it. Like, overpriced college. That's right. Like healthcare being through the roof, yeah. right? All of this thing. Right. And, um, right. You know, and then they got the hangers on, you got a certain number of hangers on a lot of them. Mm -hmm. There's leftist progressives who are sold these ideas based on narcissism. If mm -hmm. you believe this, you can feel really good about yourself. Um, and see yourself as, uh, morally superior to the rest of us. You mm -hmm. get a cheap way of feeling compassionate. Yeah. You do not have to actually lift a finger. You don't have to help anybody. You don't have to take money out of your own pocket. All you have to do is claim that you're morally superior and you're more mm -hmm. compassionate than the next guy because you're a liberal. And mm -hmm. so it's an easy, lazy way to uh, feel good about yourself. And meanwhile, even though the policies that you are advocating create more misery, more unhappiness, more poverty, and, and death and destruction in the case of open borders and all the rest, and letting, yeah. oh, you know, like AOC, all, I, all we got to do, see, is just get rid of all the prisons. Just let out all the criminals, uh, because after all, you know, you need two women. Uh, we're going to let out all the rapists that raped you because, you know, we're more compassionate. It doesn't matter how stupid and preposterous and dangerous these ideas are, you get to feel compassionate. And then when it blows up in your face, you ride in on your faux white horse and say, I have a solution for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yep. Yep. What a racket. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. You know? Totally. Could not agree with you more. Well, anyway, we are kind of done now. Uh, we've got to get going. So where do we find you, Karen, these sure. days? Best place to find you. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of new stuff that I've written lately. I got an op-ed in Western Journal and a bunch of new blog posts and new podcasts for spouting off. You can find all of that and more than you even care to see at uh, KarenCataline.com. Karen spelled the normal way. Kataline spelled K A T A L I N E. All right. Dot com. Excellent. And uh, there's a link to it in the show notes to this interview. Get right to Karen's site. Thank you. And hey, don't forget our Twitter feeds at Carrie Lutz. Uh, go tweet something or retweet our posting of this interview or any others that you like. Please uh, visit our Facebook page, Financial Survival Network. And 
our regular website, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Karen, always a pleasure. We'll talk to you again real soon. It's great to talk to you, Carrie. Thanks. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.